Hello, welcome to another one of my Micritic tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do FQ Codel with your Micritic router. Now, before we dive straight in, we're going to do a little bit of background on FQ Codel and what it means. So, previously, even in my own videos on my own channel, I've gone over SFQ and fairness queuing. Uh, ways of minimizing buffer bloat and smart queuing and uh, essentially a workaround because anyone who, who is interested in FQ Codal really knows that Ubiquity have been nailing this for absolutely years with their smart queue management. Uh, SQM was employed on Ubiquity a good poor, five or so years ago and it's slowly been refined and a lot of people have become dependent on it because it offers very low buffer bloat and quite active queue management. It's kind of a, a quas without the effort. So it's something which a lot of people have been after. PFSense did kind of, of employ it into theirs, but it required a, a little bit of messing about with to get it working properly. You can find lots of information about Codel and their project and, and how they're they're you know kind of trying to implement it and, and make it part of and it's also now part of the linux kernel which is why micritic are able to do what they what they can do micritic in general are a long way behind with their linux kernel however recently they have started making some improvements and that's why we can now do this with a micritic so before you can actually get started you have to do something which a lot of people would recommend you don't. I am going to recommend you don't do this. And I'm going to recommend you don't do this if your router is something which you have in place for your business, if it's something where you're providing a service to somebody else, or generally if it's something that you rely on day to day. Please don't do this if you tick any of those criteria, because we're going to have to move onto a beta software and with beta yes there comes large advancements in technology and the way things work but also there comes lots of bugs if you're doing any of those stay on long term or stable as an absolute minimum so for the dangerous among us we're going to have to head over to micritic.com and go into their software section and then into downloads and then you need to download the latest 7.1 beta software for your router now there are a lot of people at the moment i can see on the forums who are having problems when they're trying to put it on chrs on some weird x32 builds and, and x86 builds and that kind of thing I am very, very fortunate that I, I am doing this on a hex and that is where I'm going to do it. So I just dropped all the way down here uh, to the MMIPS or what I call multi-MIPS and then I just downloaded the main package there. So you hit download on that and then that will, will throw itself into your download section and then you can open up Winbox and get logged into your router. But um, And then what you're going to do is you have to drag your file from your file explorer over into your Micritic and let it upload. At that point then you reboot your Micritic and it will be quite a long reboot but it will come back up on the latest beta version. What you will notice that if you go to system packages and you go for check for updates you cannot, I repeat, you cannot just click development and click download and install. Now I might be able to do that because I'm already on the beta software version, but if you're already running on one of the long term or stable builds, you're not going to be able to do that. And again, just a warning before you do do this, don't do it on a router that you require for any kind of monetary involvement, whether that be for your business or you can't afford for it to go down, please don't do this. Otherwise, Get yourself up to version 7. You can see I'm here just on version 7.1 beta 3. There is a 7.1 beta 4, but the changes we need, the FQ Codal, came in in beta 3. So what we're going to do, we're going to head on over to queues. Now, I used to have a huge queue tree. In fact, I still do have a huge queue tree. It's just here, look. However, it is all disabled and a part of my queue tree there as well, you'll see in the firewall, in my mangle rules. There are a lot of mangle rules as well. That's all what was my, my QoS picking 
varying services up and and doing you know kind of various activities picking things like dns up and router upload and certain devices which were my streamers you don't need it with fqcodal so the way of doing it is you just throw in a simple queue in fact i'm i've, I've got ahead of myself here you need a queue type first so by default you get default you get default small ethernet default if you watched my previous video on an sfq kind of queue you'll notice that i talked you through creating a default sfq queue just to give yourself some differentiation but what you need to do now is you need to create yourself a code lq and that's just done by clicking the add button give it whatever name you like i gave mine fq codal i probably should have called it default F fq codal but whatever and then you change the kind to fq codal now you will also notice in this there is a codal and a cake as well which is also a new implementation now again cake is another way of doing this some people say it is significantly better however i'm seeing a lot of people getting boot loops when they put this in or it's just simply not working so for me i've been waiting for fq codal for the best part of four years so i just went straight ahead with fq codal and then left the other options as default so the the packet limit there and the interval and the target i've i've left them all alone uh i haven't seen a need to mess about with this so i'm not going to so once you have your fq codel go into a simple queue and i'm going to pick on this one but you'll click add so what i've done with my simple queue i've given it a name the target interface is my pppoe out now if you're running a PPPoE connection or a VPN connection that you, you use to go out, that's what you'll put in here. If you are one of these people running a static IP or you're, you get your IP through DHCP, you just point it at your Ethernet interface and away you go. I don't bother with a destination because I don't need it. And then you're going to fill in your values. Now, again, because it's a PPP style interface, it's kind of flipped around for a micro tick. So you're kind of looking at it from the you're looking at it from the interface's perspective to the client so it would be uploading 52 meg to me as my example here and downloading nine and a half meg from me whereas if i were the client i'd be downloading 52 meg so just bear that in mind in case your numbers don't quite work out so i have set these to about the fastest i can speed test without any kind of queuing i quieted my network off uh, i even stuck fast track into my firewall rules to eke out every last bit and i ran some speed tests and I've, I've done some continuous downloads and my connection is topping out around about 54 meg down and i get around about 9.8 meg up so i've limited it just below that because ultimately i do want the router to have control of of my bandwidth and, and of the flows so i've just come in a little bit below that and then my fq codal can work within those those parameters the advanced tab you do need to change your queue type to to the queue that you've created so in my case fq codel on both of them so that is where you're telling each queue to do what you want it to i mean what you could do here is you could change it so that one handled it you know as an sfq and one as a, a codel but if you just want straight up codel to really reduce that buffer bloat and give a really fair internet connection for everybody this is where you do it and you put codal in on both statistics and traffic you're, you're not going to touch there's nothing going on there you can see there that uh, that mrs steve oc is quite happily streaming away and traffic we can just see the traffic going over both the up and download queues but total this is also where you want to put something in total queue type i've always changed this to the same as the queue that i'm setting up i'm not sure exactly how that works in microtic land but this is just the way that i have always done it and it works pretty damn well after that we hit apply okay done and then we can see that the queue is sat here and working and if i actually had the columns showing uh upload average rate there we go look show columns down rate average rate so there we can also see that there are packets flowing across my queue so there we go that is an fq codal in a box and you can see there that my my queue momentarily went red because even though it says it's download that is my upload my upload's going a bit nuts at the moment it, 
it's it's ticking away so we know that it's working and another advantage to that and, and another way of testing that is we can set up a continuous ping out and we can start running some speed tests the ping times will increase a little bit but nothing will actually falter nothing will actually drop and and the best the best advice i can give for you is to give it a try and see if it may, matches up to what you want thank you very much if you stuck with me this long i do apologize massively that it's been so long since my last micro tutorial video I I also apologise massively because my channel went off on a slight tangent doing some weird gaming videos, but I do ultimately want to start coming back around to some networking equipment, and now was about the right time to cover the Mikrotik stuff. So thank you very much. Please drop my video a like. Please leave me a comment. I absolutely love reading all the comments that you guys write for me, especially on the ones like my hairpin nap video now, which is the best part of four and five years old, and I'm still getting comments weekly on that uh, for people that I'm helping with it so I really do help that my video helps you and uh, if you do feel extra spicy please do leave me a subscription on my channel it does mean a lot to me and it does also push me on to do more and go further with my videos thank you very much have a great evening slash day goodbye